Welcome to another episode of Mad Dog Masterclass. Today we are going to finally take to the air in the uh, in the jet here after all of the preparation we've done in the other lessons. And so today's flight is going to be uh, straight through a flight from Las Vegas to San Jose in the MD-82. Uh, it's going to be broken up into three sections. This first section that you're watching right now is going to be the uh, aircraft preparation and taxi. The video will stop right before we uh, take off. The uh, second video will take us from takeoff all the way up to uh, all the way through climb and cruise. We'll talk about holding procedures. And, uh, and then the last video will be our descent, landing, and parking the jet in San Jose. Uh, the be uh, beautiful thing about YouTube here is that you can uh, fly along, you can pause the video, you can rewind the video, and, uh, and kind of really get the procedures down. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail in the setup of the aircraft because we've done that already in the uh, previous videos of how to set up the FMC and how to do the overhead and, uh, and general preparation flows and what all the things we're looking at, the different systems, the fuel, the hydraulics, the pneumatics, the air conditioning, all that stuff. So we're not really going to go into that. I'm going to go over it and I'm just going to run through it quickly like we would normally setting up the jet. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I felt it was probably helpful to see the entire flow not broken up. And so uh, we did the explanation in the previous videos. We're going to do the full thing now. So I uh, do want to encourage you to come check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mustafa. I stream there every week multiple times, um, mostly flight simulation, a little bit of uh, some other stuff as well. And then um, also, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please leave those in the uh, comment section down below. Uh, but the best way to ask questions is to join the Discord, and the link for that is in the description down below as well. And as always, I would appreciate if you would hit the, uh, the like button and uh, the subscribe button if you find this content helpful, and it uh, really does help to grow the channel. So, without further ado, we're going to get started. The only thing I've done so far is I've connected up uh, ground power. I will be using GSX today, so I'm using the GSX integration. I will talk briefly about how you would load the plane if you do not have GSX, because uh, we'll see kind of the same areas, most of the stuff will translate, but that's uh, for pushback, for uh, the loading of the airplane, and uh, stuff is all going to be GSX. And then this is uh, McCarran, oh, no, it's not McCarran anymore, uh, Harry S. Reed uh, Airport. Uh, this is by Fly Tampa, and the uh, San Jose Airport scenery that we're going to be going into is by Orbex. Okay, I think uh, that is all the preliminary stuff we need out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into the jet. All right, so here on the uh, on the aircraft, you can see we've got the door open and the jetway connected already. And uh, we're going to come down here into the flight deck just like we would. It is cold and dark. We do have ground power connected, like I said. And so the first thing we need to do is uh, come down here and check our uh, our battery and so we're going to hit the uh, battery switch on. And actually, before we do that, we would check a few things. Sorry, I'm running out of order here. Um, we would want to check and make sure that the, uh, the throttles are idle, the gear handles down, uh, windshield wipers are uh, off. Um, just kind of some, some safety things to make sure the aircraft's not going to do anything uh, ridiculous before we get going. And so it looks like everything is in a, in a proper state. So uh, next thing we'll do, we'll come up here and we'll check the battery voltage and make sure we have better than 25 volts. And we do. So battery switch goes on and locks. So it, you put it down and it turns and we should see some stuff coming in the uh, EOAP, the uh, electronic overhead annunciator panel there. And as that kind of spins up, we can then switch this over to external power and we can witness that we have about 115 volts and around 400 hertz. And we do, and that's also signified by the blue light. So we can go ahead and turn that on and turn that on. We'll also turn galley power on so that way uh, flight attendants can get the, uh, the uh, coffee ready for in the back. We also need to come down here. Anytime the uh, aircraft is powered, we need to turn on the, uh, the nav lights. Now you can go to nav, you can go to both position and strobe because the strobes won't kick in until the, uh, the weight on wheels switch uh, is triggered by the, the landing gear leaving the ground. So uh, you can just go ahead and put that all the way down to both. Things are going to start to boot up uh, as the AHRS system, which is the GPS system, uh, comes alive. Uh, you'll see the uh, displays here go to normal. There's no switches that you need to do to operate that. Once again, it's all automatic in this aircraft, which is awesome. That's how that is in the real world for this aircraft does not have an IRS system, it's a different uh, GPS based system. 
Yeah, that's very nice. So there you go. Let's see that coming online now. We will have to uh, confirm the GPS location and the FMC, but we'll do that in a little bit. All right, before we do the uh, weight and balance, let's go ahead and do the uh, PA and emergency light check. So we come down here, throw the emergency lights to on, and we do this PA button. PA and emergency light test. Emergency lights okay. Says emergency lights are okay. That also confirmed the PA, so we can go to on. Notice the seatbelt sign is off. We're going to be refueling the aircraft, so we want to make sure that's off until the refueling is done. I like to leave the seatbelt sign off until the passengers are done boarding, and then we'll turn that on for takeoff. Uh, everything else uh, can wait now until we get the uh, passengers boarding. So we're going to come over here to the uh, tablet, and we're going to turn this guy on. I've already done the flight plan in uh, sim brief, so that's already done. We want to check the uh, electronic technical log and make sure that we don't have any uh, things pending, we don't have any deferred defects that uh, are going to keep us uh, from taking off that are not on the MEL list, minimum equipment list, and, uh, sorry, I guess MEL list is a little redundant, minimum equipment list list, <laughs> uh, and so uh, that's all done. Sometimes you'll have a, a weekly uh, ch uh, transit check or something that you need, need to perform and just do that. Uh, you do need to make sure, in order for those to happen, you need to make sure that the aircraft door is open, the uh, aircraft is uh, obviously sat on the ground, and uh, the flight mode is off on the tablet, so otherwise that stuff will not accomplish. Okay, with that being done, we can go down to weight and balance, and we're gonna imp import the SimBrief OFP. Um, if you uh, do not have your aircraft connected through SimBrief, uh, through the load manager, which is described in the very first video, um, then you can always import the physical copy, but to do that, you'll have to download the flight plan and the ACARs from SimBrief or PFPX or whatever you're using uh, if you're going to import. Otherwise, you need to use and put in the values yourself, uh, or you can use the load manager to put in the values yourself, but again, don't use the load manager and the tablet, pick one or the other, because they don't, they don't uh, cooperate, they fight each other. So I'm just going to hit SimBrief OFP, that's going to bring it in automatically, just like an ACARS download. You can see our uh, tail number, or our, our flight number down here, and today is the, uh, the 18th of August of 2023, so we know everything is correct, and it's brought it in correctly. Now, before we start boarding the passengers, I'm going to do the ACAR setup right here. And so we're going to go to Menu. And again, you can use either either uh, FMC head. I like to use ACARs on the number two uh, and the FMC on the other one. But you can do it any way you want. It's not uh, restricted to one or the other. AOC standard, pre-flight, init data, and we're going to say init request. Again, if you did not bring the information in with a loaded flight plan, you'd have to import that data manually but we can do that ACAR style and bring that in uh, because we have that. Weight and balance. We're gonna get this off of our flight plan. And uh, the uh, trip fuel is uh, 8,759, 8,759. Taxi fuel is 800. And the block fuel is 19,661. All right, so those are in, we hit send and then we can hit flight plan right there. And what that's gonna do is over in the receive messages, it's gonna generate a preliminary load sheet. When the aircraft is done being loaded, we'll get a final load sheet. And it'll also give us our flight plan uh, in uh, ACARS form here uh, on the system. So we're just gonna leave that be. Some, that'll take a little bit to populate. Some of those will start to come in. You'll hear a ding when those do, and that's how you know that's happened. Okay, so we are ready to uh, refuel. We have 6,000 uh, pounds of fuel on board. Obviously we need 19, so we need some fuel. So Again, I'm going to go over to GSX, and uh, I always recommend hitting the refuel first because if you uh, wait and do the boarding and then refueling, the boarding, uh, the cargo uh, loaders will block the refueling from happening and you'll waste a whole bunch of time. This way just is the most effective to do it. So uh, refueling first, and then we're going to go over and request boarding. Always make sure it says fuel truck is on its way. Sometimes with GSX, you'll click something, and uh, depending on the menu you've been on before, it won't quite take effect. So always double check it first before going into the next item, or you may have skipped it and you come back and realize you have no fuel. Uh, it's just a little weird glitch of GSX. I don't know what causes it, because I think it has to do with whether or not you've asked for services already to some extent or something, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so request boarding. And eventually it's going to ask us if we want to board crew, we want to board uh, everybody or just nobody. And the, the nobody refers to just board the passengers, don't worry about the crew, like the pilots and the flight attendants, because we're already on board. So I always say nobody. 
Okay, with that done, we can now start to do the pre-flight flow. And so that is what we're going to do right now. There it is. So nobody. There we go. I'm going to start to board. Okay. We start up here on the overhead. Again, checking the switches, making sure they're all pointed up at uh, high noon. We're going to hit the cockpit voice recorder test, and we hold that until we see the green light. It takes about five seconds. There's the light. That's a good test. We want to reset the gens and make sure they go back to on and reset the APU gen. If you're running off the APU at this stage, don't do this because you're already, you don't need to reset it. I reset all these because every once in a while you get an issue where something doesn't uh, connect in and uh, a reset will fix it, but you can preempt it by doing that, and that's just helpful. The uh, AC volt selector should be over on bat amp and verify that we have uh, zero amps on the, being drawn off the battery. Obviously we're coming off ground power and the battery charger deflection, we see that there, that's good. Uh, on the uh, electrical panel, obviously we're in external power at the moment. Galley power's on, AC bus cross ties are auto, the DC bus ties are open. And on the APU side, all of the uh, fire agents are off. Norm, the uh, APU master's off because we're not using it. The doors are in auto and guarded. And the APU uh, uh, switch is in normal. Emergency power in use light is not on. And the battery light is on. Or sorry, the battery switch is on. We can go ahead and switch over to emergency power. Just verify that we get that emergency power light. We should see draw on the battery there. And then putting that off should uh, reduce that and the charger goes back up. That's a good test for the emergency power on the battery. All right, over here on the uh, fuel panel, we're just going to verify right now everything is off. If we were running the APU, we'd want to make sure one of our uh, right or center pumps was on for the APU, but since none of those are running, we don't need to worry about that at the moment. Down here, emergency lights are on. The seatbelt signs are off because we're fueling and boarding. No smoke signs should always be on. We're going to test the mass, the pitot static heat systems. Again, we should get a bump on everything except the rat probe. You won't get that on the ground. That's fine. Back to off when it's done. Windshield anti-ice goes on. None of the other anti-ice stuff should be on at this time. All right, over here at the top, we're going to come up and uh, flip open the flight uh, recorder test, go to the ground test, and we're going to enter our data. Today is the 18th of August. We are flight 683, leg number one, insert, no lights and close that back up. Then we can do the test for the cargo uh, heat detectors, the cargo smoke, and silence. That's a good test. Panel lights, back lights set as desired. I like to go full up on the first one at about uh, 12 o'clock on the second. Engine sync selector should be off ground. Proximity warning and wind shear test. We're gonna test those right now. We're looking for the magic carpet and we're looking for the lights on either side, the caution lights, and here the oral warning. And that is a good test. Now we hit the wind shear. Headwind, shear, headwind, shear, headwind, shear. Tailwind, shear, tailwind, shear, tailwind, shear. And again, we saw the lights, we heard the oral warning, and so that is a good test as well. Want to make sure we can see the EOAP when we do these next tests. So the anti skid, we're looking for four results one, two, three, four, and they should all go away. And then we want to do the stall test. And we see the stall lights right there and the stick pusher lights. We should see the same thing when we do the version number two. And we hear the warning as well. Overspeed test. And number two. It's morning, so we don't need the logo light. The yaw damp, we're going to put it to override. Just verify it goes off and then back away when it goes on. And the ice fod test, we hold looking for four results. One, two, three, four. And again, four to disappear. On the air conditioning panel, everything is pretty much set already. We're not using AC right now, or air conditioning right now, so we have the external air connected. But uh, we want to make sure the radio rack is in fan mode. Uh, we do want to verify the air conditioning setup switch override is in auto, the ram air is off. And over here, we're going to cycle the, uh, the two uh, modes for the pressurization and cancel the transfer lockout. And then here's where you set either destination altitude or your current altitude. Uh, in case you got to come back, I like to go with the current altitude and then on, in cruise I'll set destination. So we're going to set field elevation, which is about 2180 here at Las Vegas. So again, just get it kind of roughly close. And then we need to know the uh, barometric pressure at the moment as well. So we're going to check the uh, real world ADA since we're not on Vatsim. Uh, K L A S. This is a, uh, a widget through the Flow uh, Pro option. If you have Flow, you can download this from flightsim.to or you can go to a website and do uh, 
uh, METAR TAF or something like that. But we're looking at uh, 299 or 5, and you can also see right now we're departing off 26 right in addition to 19 or right. Uh, 170 at 6. Um, uh, let's see, 3D1 on the visibility and 2995, yeah, so, okay, just making some notes here. So 2995, we will set that roughly right in there. Check our rate limit and flow, make sure the light illuminates. This should be on the bug, and it is. And now we can do our, oops, sorry, I'm a little close in here all of a sudden. We can do our enunciator lights. And again, uh, to hold any of these down, like you see me do right there, instead of clicking it, which is what I'm doing right there, that's a left click, if you use your scroll wheel, it'll hold it down. And then you can let go of the mouse and move it around and do other things. So we see all of that lit up there, that's good. We're looking at the lights there, and the most important, we're looking for those lights, that's the only way we get those to light up. And we're looking for primarily our uh, FMAs, flight mode enunciators there, but everything else should be showing and uh, lit up as well, and it is, so that's a good test. We'll park the windshield wipers, Leave the uh, door unlocked for now, and we'll come down to the glare shield. Here we're going to set uh, any ILS frequency that's not local to the field, but I always just default to 111.15. I have yet to go to an airport where 111.15 was a local ILS frequency, so uh, one of these days I'll have to change that. But uh, in the meantime, this is what I use. Don't worry about the course setup, and we're going to go to master number two and hit auto land. It's going to start the auto land test on the FO side. While that's happening, we're going to continue over to the oxygen. All right, and we're going to set our radios up. Again, not really important today because we're not on VATSIM, but I would just do that out of habit. Panel lights, we'll turn uh, that one up all the way, and again, uh, this one up to noon. Again, this is all how you desire to do it. This is not, the panel lights are all as, as you desire. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Check your chronometer, make sure the time matches uh, what you expect which it's always going to match the sim time, so it's not really that vital to check in the sim, but in the real world, they always want to make sure that matches up. You can check your terrain radar, and depending on what's around you, you may get a return or not. Uh, here in Las Vegas, we've got a lot of mountains nearby, so we can actually see stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, the uh, airspeed indicator is displaying no flags, and it's showing us the uh, appropriate uh, speeds for the barber pole and uh, 0.15 on the mock as it defaults to. That's all normal. On the barrow, we want to set up 299 or 5, and then we're going to hit the test button for the PFD and the ND. It's going to run through some tests, looking for all the various uh, indicators. It's doing the uh, marker beacon uh, noises and things like that you hear right there. We just hold that until we see the artificial horizon again, then we can let go, and that test is accomplished. All right, coming over to the standby, we're going to uh, cage the standby. Watch it center up there. And then this standby, we need to set to 299 or 5 as well. And you notice the uh, test is done over here on Autoland. No, uh, no land flag or no Autoland flag. So we'll switch this to 1, hit Autoland again, and it's going to do the test on the captain side. And while that's happening, we're going to clear the master caution. Because I want to verify the master caution goes when I do one loop. And then two loops should give us the master warning, the fire lights there. And we're looking for six lights up top. And we obviously hear the oral warning as well. We can hit the silence button, and after it finishes its last one, it should stop. And then we can clear that. That is a good fire test. All right, on the TRP, we're going to be looking for a result here. These are going to move. We're going to see the no mode go away as we hold this down. Boom. 2.04. They move. All that's good. That's a good TRP test. And down here, fuel test A and fuel test B. And... While we're down here, we'll check our quantities. So we need 12 on the oil. We have 14, 15, so we're good. And we need five, better than 5 on the hydraulic. We have 16, so that's good. Let's get our hydraulic test. We're going to go to override first, verify pressure, then go to on. That should go all the way up to above 28, 28 or better. And the trans pump should give us 20 or better. And we've got both those indications, so we got good hydraulic pressure. Those can go back off. Auto brake, or the brake uh, temperature indicator, we'll just test that real fast, make sure that it looks like it's working. Uh, we verify that 2995 is set on the FO side. It, the way I have it set is it, it's linked to this one, so I only have to set one of them. We'll just verify that. Uh, the radios for the FO are all set. We'll do his oxygen, and we can check the bottle over here and just make sure we got the pressure and, and all as well. All right, coming down to the pedestal now. We're going to do the 
the uh, weather radar test, so we power it on, hit test, do that quickly because you don't want to irradiate people out there. And we see we got good indication, so power off, goes there. And moving down, we can verify the spoiler is down, the flaps are up, throttle is idle, fuel is cut off, and we want to check our trim, so we're going to hit the uh, suitcase handles here, see it move in both directions. You can also check your uh, controls on your yoke, which is what I'm doing right now, or your um, stick, whatever you're using. And finally, we want to verify that the alternate trim also works. It's going to move it slower, but it should work too. And finally, as part of that, we're going to disable the electric trim. And now the suitcase handle shouldn't do anything. My trim on my yoke won't do anything, but we do want to verify the, uh, the alternate trim. The alternate trim still does work, and it does. Don't forget to turn that back on. You'll have to find just the right spot to get to that because it's kind of a funny quick spot. But uh, there you go. All right, and moving on down to the uh, transponder. Uh, because we're not in VATSIM, we'll set 2000, and then we'll hit the uh, test button right there. That's going to run through the TCAS test. You can see it going right there. We'll get a TCAS pass TCAS in a second. System test, OK. Or TCAS OK, whatever. Uh, that works. And then we do want to turn uh, open the pneumatic crossfeed valves. Make sure those are open right there. And over here, you can also, something I like to do is go into the ATC mode and set, uh, oh, it's already set to American, perfect, AAL683, enter, make sure you hit enter or we'll clear, and then you can go back. So now the uh, ID is in there correctly for our, um, our uh, flight number. Okay, last thing I always forget to do is turn up the back lighting on the, uh, on the glare shield there. All right, so we are all set uh, for the uh, pre-flight. We do need to do the uh, FMC now. And you can see we've got our uh, crew message here with our preliminary weight, so that's good. Uh, we're going to verify on the FMC that we've got our current uh, air rack date, August 10th through September 7th. Today's the 18th, so we're good. Again, this is just as you expect. Uh, if you don't have your air racks updated all the time, just make sure you have the, the air rack that you expect in there. And also verify that you're flying the 82 version and not the uh, 88 or the 83 if, again, you expect to be doing so. Uh, pausing it. So our reference airport is Las Vegas, K-L-A-S. And we can look at the uh, reference uh, uh, position, 36.4.8, and compare that to where the GPS thinks we are, 36.4.8, 158.2. Now remember, this is referencing the center point of the airport, air airport wherever they took their uh, measurement from. So it will be a little different, but it should be close. And if it's close, then we can trust it. And so we'll take the uh, actual GPS location, we'll stick that in there, and that's good. Over to route, just follow the instructions here. And uh, we'll go ahead and do the company route. We'll pull that in. Otherwise, you could put your destination manually here and put all the things in manually. KSJC, we already got the LAS in there company route. It's only going to add two waypoints because that's the only things that are not SIDS and STARS in the whole route, just Kino and Rusmi. So not too much to worry about there. So let's go to departure arrival. And again, do this once you at least have a clear idea of what you expect, or you may have already gotten clearance and told what to expect if you're on VATSIM. Uh, you can always change this, so it's not a big deal, but it's just more work for you. So, and again, always start with the runway. So we're going to be doing 2-6 right. And we're doing the Joker 3 to Kino. And that goes back to route. We're going to go departure arrival again. And we're going to do ILS 30 left in San Jose. Uh, it's the Razor 5 to from Rusmi. And it's Clyde. I just know that already. But you would have to check the chart if you weren't sure. So that's all set. We go to route, activate execute that we'll look at the legs and make sure we don't have any discontinuities or if we do they're expected like vectors or something like that and that's all good we'd also want to go through and make sure all of the uh, all of the uh, restrictions match with what we have and so when we do our departure briefing we'll actually double check those here in a moment at least for the departure we'll confirm the arrival ones in flight uh, all right so that's all good we now go to uh, init ref and we need to put in our uh, perfinet our performance initialization so we start with a zero fuel weight, and I heard some dinging. Did we get a final load sheet yet? No, not yet. So, oh, there it is. Perfect timing. So you can use the initial one, but the zero fuel weight might change a little bit, so be prepared for that and be prepared to update that if you need to. Uh, but in our case, uh, we've got the final. So see, it's load sheet final right there. Zero fuel weight's 114.805.
114.8 goes right there. Uh, we can look up at the fuel. And now that we have the final load sheet, before I continue, because I don't want to waste time, we're going to go ahead and turn on our uh, APU. So before I hit the start, I want to make sure I turn on one of the fuel pumps. If we didn't have, if we were turning this on first, we didn't have external AC power, I would be using the start pump until I had power on, and then I would go through uh, to a pump and turn that off. But because we have external power, we have AC power, I don't need to do that. We just use one of the, uh, the right or center pumps to do that. And you can see that is spooling up nicely. That will take over as soon as that pops up. All right, so fuel on board, 19.6. You can see that right there, 19.6 slash normal. Again, unless it's really stupid cold, you're not going to use the alternate fuel burn, and you have to do the, the tanks anyway, so it's not like it's going to do it for you, just to, for the FMC to know what you're doing. Uh, reserves, we get that off of the flight plan, which is 9.2 in this case. 9.2, that goes right there. Cruise altitude today is 280. And we can get our cruise wind off of Simbrief, 169.45. 169.45 and our ISA deviation is plus 11. That's going to go right there. All right, 18,000 feet is the transition altitude as we're in the United States. And we can go over to takeoff and now it's waiting for our V speeds. We'll do that in a second. Before we leave this area though, we want to set our zero fuel weight in the, uh, the fuel quantity computer here. So 114.8, we're just going to roll this up. You don't have to push anything. Uh, the minute you start manipulating the uh, the knob it's going to switch over to zero fuel weight it, you cannot manipulate the gross weight the only way you can manipulate that is change the amount of fuel or the zero fuel weight so it's adding those up together to get you your gross so 114 what is it 114.8 oh beautiful that that rarely happens the switch over happened right there uh, you just get to have as close as you can get basically so uh, so gross weight's 134 450 and that's important so we expect uh, we were given 800 pounds of taxi fuel Given the fact that we're taking off on 2.6 right, it's not going to be a very long taxi. So I'm going to assume our takeoff is one, uh, 134, 200. We're probably going to burn more than that, by a little bit at least. But I'd rather be just a little bit heavier when I do my calculations than lighter uh, for my calculations. So uh, we're going to go 134, 2. So we're going to go over here and performance. It's already got us in Las Vegas. We're going to make sure we set 2.6 right. Uh, 134, 200 is going to be our takeoff weight. And then I believe it was 170 at 6, I think. Whoops, that's 7. What was it? <laughs> it's been a while since I looked at those KLAS. It was 170 at something. 6, 7, something. Oh, I was right. One zero. Hey, I did it by accident. I was actually spot on. Okay. Uh, 33 is the temperature, and it's a 9.6 now, so we actually got up a little bit, so... Uh, 33 for the temp, we'll do 2996. Uh, flap, uh, I like to do the Continental SOP, which says we do flap 11 unless we need to do flap 15, and only then do we try to do optimum if it's anything less than that. Also, just note, it is hot and we are a little high, so uh, we want to be careful about that, but I believe 26 right is a very long runway, uh, so I don't think we need to worry too much. Oh yeah, we got 14,000 feet of runway, so... My rule, again, is anything under 10,000 feet, especially if it's uh, hot and high, or hot or high, uh, we do not uh, flex. So, But I'll, I'll let the computer decide if we can flex today based on that since it's such a long runway. Uh, packs on, any ice off, everything else looks okay, so we'll say calculate. And that's going to give us a flap 11 and a select temp of 36. 135, 39, 48. 135... 139, 148. All right, our uh, APU is definitely switched over. We're gonna, whoa, no it hasn't. That's why <laughs> I didn't turn the APU switches on. That was dangerous. I almost killed all the power of the airplane. Did we lose anything? I don't think so. We lost the uh, AHRS. That'll reset here in a second. <laughs> Always be careful. I uh, fell for it. I didn't. I didn't look. I looked at that blue light. I did not look at those blue lights. That was dangerous. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so now we can turn the external power off. And again, you do that so when they pull the plug down below, no one actually gets shocked. You can see in doing that though, I freaked the system out, and we went into the standby um, 
uh, mode on the pressurization and transfer lockout, so I want to switch that back and clear that. In flight, you don't necessarily want to clear that because it's transferred lockout for a reason. On the ground, you can do that, uh, usually because of some kind of electrical goof that you probably did, or in this case, I did. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we're, we're on APU. We can also get the air going. It's hot in Vegas, so we're going to do air conditioner colder. That's going to uh, close the exhaust flap on the, uh, on the turbo there. That's not a turbo, but it's kind of like a turbo. And basically, uh, it's like, uh, it's like uh, closing the waste gate on a, on a turbo in your car, and so it allows you to get a little bit more boost out of your uh, bleed air uh, system, make the air colder. So we have uh, pressurization there. We can go ahead and turn on... The air conditioner, you're going to do these one at a time and wait for them to stabilize because you want to wait for all the power to kick in so you don't blow like a breaker or something. And there we go. They're both on now. So now what we can do is we can come over here and turn off the ground AC. I can't do the GPU from here. You would if you were not using GSX. But because we're using GSX, we're going to go up to GSX menu, additional services, and dismiss the GPU that way. Also, you can see the passengers have already loaded. If you didn't have GSX, uh, you would have had the option to click right here to load the passengers and also clicking here to load the fuel. But all that was done through GSX. All right, so that is done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the tablet over to flight mode now before I forget to do it. And uh, since we're all loaded up and doors are closed. And, oh, I didn't turn my lights on over here. That's what I didn't do. All right. Okay, so that is all ready to go. We do need to set 148 up here in the speed window. And if we had ATC, they'd be telling us uh, what to uh, do for our initial altitude. So uh, in this case, let's go ahead and do our departure brief and, uh, and look at that. We'll also bring up the legs page here so we can verify that with this. So for the departure brief, and uh, this is a little bit more important when you're on VATSIM or Pilot Edge or something. Uh, it's very important if you're doing a multi-crew situation, but in our case, we're just kind of telling ourselves what we're going to do and verifying it, and it keeps it at the forefront of your mind. So uh, we're over here at gate Delta 7. We're going to 2-6 right. So uh, we have a very short taxi. So we're going to uh, push back nose to the right. We're going to go down to uh, Charlie, Charlie 3, and then Bravo all the way down to uh, the end for full length takeoff on 26 right. 259 is the runway heading for 26 right. We have 14,515 feet. And you can see here our altitude is 2181. So uh, we had that set up correctly. Uh, the departure we're doing is the Joker 3. And you can see the top altitude on the chart is uh, 190. If we were flying on VATSIM, I would only ever set my altitude to this until we got close to it. And if there was still there was no ATC on, then I would bug up to uh, cruise altitude. Um, but because we don't uh, have any, we're not going to be on VATSIM, so I know we're not going to have any ATC. We're going to just bug up to our, our cruise. However, on the departure, so we're taking off 26 right, and you can see this uh, silt is for 26 left, so we're going straight to Rudy. We have a at or above 4,000, max of 230 knots here at Rudy, and then we turn down and we have it sells at or below 8,000. Now, because of the way we're going to do the takeoff in this aircraft, I don't go into VNAV right away. And so in order to make sure we clear, we don't bust this altitude, I'm going to set my uh, speed, um, my altitude to 8,000. And I'll explain why we do what we do uh, as we get to the takeoff segment. So just know that. Uh, other aircraft, 737 and stuff, you can do that. If you're going to use VNAV right away, then you don't really need to do that. Um, I still recommend you do it anyway. And I'll, again, I'll explain why. Uh, from cells, we're going to go all the way down to Magneto, and then Magneto, we go to Kruger, we got to add or below 11,000. This one we may or may not worry about referencing, it's quite a ways away, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll kind of play it up by ear. A lot of times we get cleared above that by ATC anyway. Uh, from Kruger, we go Joker, uh, Gramitz, uh, Deadpool, Biker, KG, and Kino. And there's no more speed or altitude restrictions after Kruger anyway. So we just have the one speed restriction, which is 230. Obviously, we have 10,000 below, or sorry, 2,020. Obviously, we have 250 below 10,000 feet, if I could speak. Uh, but we do have two altitude restrictions we've got to be aware of. Three, technically, at or, below, at or above four, 
and then at or below 8 and at or below 11. This one's not as critical because there shouldn't be any reason why we can't get it above 4 on takeoff. These ones we have to, we will have to actively make sure we stay below. And again, I might decide to just override Kruger, but we'll see. Uh, Alright, so that's all good. Uh, we want to be aware of any uh, uh, terrain uh, considerations, dangers to the takeoff. Obviously, we're, we're flying in the direction of these mountains right here, and hence flying on the route is very important, and uh, just maintaining situational awareness of the terrain. Uh, so that's the main thing. There's no real weather in the area. Minimum safe altitude for us is 12,900 within this circle. Uh, so we actually won't get to that until we get beyond the circle, according to this, <laughs> according to the SID. So again, being very aware of the uh, of the terrain. The high point on this chart is over here, eleven eight nine four. So everything else is below that, and that's why twelve nine is the safe. So. Okay. Uh, so that is that. The uh, what we'd want to do is verify with the uh, flight plan now that we have those. In here, so Rudy, there's that 2,000 uh, at above four. We got cells uh, 8,000 or below. Uh, Magneto, it's it's not bolded, so that's just what the uh, the computer is calculating. It's going to have to hold us at 11 because we have this Kruger 11 or below, and that's the last one until we get to the star. And we'll talk about the star in cruise. All right, so that's good. The other thing that we would brief uh, is uh, runway procedures. So we'll take off uh, using uh, flex power today. And uh, if anything happens below 80 knots that I am not expecting, then I will uh, cut the power and uh, we'll stop there. After 80 knots, we only stop for critical failures, such as a loss of an engine, engine fire, loss of control, something like that. <clears throat> and then after V1, we obviously have to do our best to take it into the air and uh, solve the problem and come back or, or whatever so okay that is the normal flow of things up there uh, so we are doing a uh, flex takeoff takeoff select temp 36 so there's a few things we need to do we need to first of all <coughs> excuse me uh, turn off the art the art cannot be on if you're flexing and then with select takeoff flex right there and we're doing 36 so this assume temperature knob we just bump that up to 36 it's gonna default to 35 but you can obviously run it through whatever. We're gonna do 36. All right, so that is all set. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do, and this is always an easy one to forget, is now that you have your weight and balance and your final load sheet, is you wanna come over to the, um, the final load sheet here, go to the next page, and you're gonna take a look at the Mokto 12.3. And we're gonna set that right here in the analog computer 12.3 eh, right probably close in there something like that and then our flaps we're using is flaps 11 so we're going to do flap 11 right there that sets the green bug for our trim which we need to set to the green bug it's not setting our flaps but it is telling the takeoff warning computer that if our flaps are not set to 11 it's going to sound and speaking of which, we did not do the takeoff uh, computer uh, config. So I'll do that right there. And I can see my, my uh, controller wavering, and I don't like that. It's not supposed to be doing that anymore. I keep fixing this, and it keeps jumping back to nonsense. I'm going to look at that and see what's going on. All right, so, but it also showed us that the uh, pressurization is in auto there. You can put that in manual by doing that auto, and you see it running up. It should run back. We had the takeoff config. And uh, we're not using dial flaps, so we can leave that alone. Getting ready to push, uh, we can go ahead and turn our uh, uh, transponder to transponder mode. We wouldn't put it in TARA yet. And uh, we can also hit the bugs to set the bugs. And now the airplane is pretty much set. We're ready to go ahead and do our uh, preliminary checklist and make sure we didn't miss anything. So you can find that right here in the tablet. And so uh, flight recorder. Uh, was tested and checked. That is the these guys up here. The cockpit voice recorder, flight recorder was all done. Uh, the AHRS alignment is uh, done and verified by the fact that our uh, our uh, ADIs and HSIs are all working. Uh, FMS GPS is checked and set. We went through and, and set up the uh, the FMS already. It's done. Emergency lights are armed. That is this right there. That is armed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the seatbelt sign on now that the uh, passengers are done boarding. Cabin signs on, on. That is what I just did. On, on. No smoking. Seatbelt signs are on. Uh, windshield anti-ice is on. That is that one switch right there. That guy's on. 
Engine sync selector is off. Again, you're only supposed to use that in cruise. If you use it at all, I don't ever touch it, but you can do it. But it is off. We verified that in the uh, check. Stall warning, we tested. Air conditioner soft switch is in auto. That was that guy right there. He's in auto. Uh, fire protection system was tested. The TRP was tested. Uh, fuel quantity is 19.5, uh, was 19.6. We're burning a little bit on the APU, but we're definitely fine for what we expect for the flight plan. Altimeters are no longer 2905. That was something we need to change. 2906. And that is set and cross checked. Fuel shutoff levers are off. That's those guys right there. And cabin pressure lever is an auto, and we verified it by doing the, uh, the throttle check there. All right, that is the uh, cockpit crew checklist complete. Uh, we're ready for the before star checklist. All right, so let us do that. Uh, not the before start, but let's call for um, push and start. So we're going to go over to GSX, and we're going to say prepare for pushback and departure. And we're going to see the jetway pull back here in a second. Remember, we verify the doors are closed already. Here comes the uh, lady with the pin. And we want to turn on the uh, the beacon lights. Obviously, make sure your parking brake is set. Captain, we are ready for pushback. The beacon lights will remove your uh, wheel chocks. So always do that before uh, GSX finishes hooking up. Otherwise, there might be some confusion on brake release. Don't want to have to worry about that. I'm going to change these off of an ILS frequency. It's not really necessary, but I like to do it. And also, we're going to set the altitude up to 8,000. And then this was 259. Is uh, runway heading, so we're going to set that. All right, that's all ready to go. They're coming over to connect up. All right, remember we said uh, nose to the right, so nose to the right. Release parking brakes, please. All right, and we're ready for brake release. So we're gonna go brakes released. Commencing push, so all engines clear, start at will. All right, ready for engine start. So we can run through our before start flow and then we'll back it up with the checklist. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our fuel pumps on. Center pump has uh, just over 1,100 pounds in it. So we're gonna leave the center pumps off until we're in the air. Uh, system starting system is going to go to either A or B. We'll go to A today. We need to turn off the uh, the two air conditioning packs because we're going to need that pneumatic air for starting. We're going to verify that our pneumatic air for starting is above four right there, which it is, and our beacon is on, and our brakes are as required, which are not required because we're pushing. So before start checklist, parking brakes are as required. EFB is in flight mode, we did that already. Pneumatic pressure is set for starting, that's above four there. Engine ignition selector is system A. Left, right, center fuel tank pumps are all on, the ones we need, we're not doing the centers. Any collision is on, APU, norm, econ switch is in normal, that's that guy right there. Uh, the AP air conditioning supply switches are off, the pneumatic cross feed levers are open, that's those guys down there. And the thrust levers are idle, we're good to start. Engine number two. And we do that with the scroll wheel, and we should see N2 start to spool up. And at approximately 18 to 20% N2, I will uh, cut in the fuel right there. I have a uh, fuel lever control on my Bravo, so that's why I don't have to reach down to do that. Parking brake. All right, brakes are set. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. As soon as the brakes are set, that's when GSX confirms the engine start. So I can, um, you can always just hold off on doing the parking brake until you have the engine. I just, I'm fine with them disconnecting, so I don't have to wait too long. As soon as you hear that cut over of the power, you can go ahead and close the start valve. And at that point, we can also come down here and close the pneumatic cross feed for the right side and turn on the air for the right side because now that engine bleed and air conditioner pack are isolated from the other engine and the APU so we can still start and not have to worry about the drop in the pressure. So we'll go ahead and start engine number one now. And there we go, we get uh, engine rolling up. If ever you don't, you see this rolling up very slowly or not enough, Check your uh, 
AC packs and make sure they're off. Left is clear, right is clear. But again, as long as you isolate, if you left this open and started that right pack, then you'd have problems. We have light up. We'll have the cut over here in a second. There it goes. Go ahead and kick that. The ignition can go back to off. Again, we're going to leave the center pumps off. We do PO heats to on. We can close the lock, lock the flight deck door. We actually probably should have done that earlier. At this point, we will come down and close the cross feed for the left engine and turn on the left pack. The APU air can go off and the APU master can go off. We will leave the uh, APU bus switches on, so that way if we have to re-engage that at any time, they're ready to kick over nice and quickly. That's just a, a good procedure to do. Flaps are gonna come down to 11. Spoiler is gonna arm. I put the uh, transponder to TARA right now. There's no, it's not gonna give us really alerts on the ground anyway, so it's fine. Uh, we're gonna go auto brake to take off and arm it. Obviously, make sure the pneumatic cross feeds are down. And over here are the hydraulic pumps. These need to go to aux on and trans on for takeoff. It's a backup system, basically. Verify the TRP is showing takeoff flex with our, uh, our situation there, 36. Again, looking at all of our settings here, that's good. And then what we want to do is do our flight director on. And I hit the, uh, you notice the engines are idling a little high, 2.9 on the uh, N1s. So I'm going to hit the... Uh, the auto thrust arm and it's going to put them in the clamp and uh, go down to about 22 and I'm going to take that back off and they'll stay there. It's a goofy thing I've, I've put on the forums for uh, Leonardo to see if that's a real world thing or it's the goof of the, the programming of this plane and I have yet to hear an answer so we'll see. Uh, Alright, so that is all set. We would normally call for our uh, takeoff, or sorry, taxi clearance here uh, but we need to also then do our after start checklist. So engine ignition selector we turned off, the pitot and stack heaters we turned on, again just by going into captain it turns them all on, you're just seeing the, the uh, level, the, the amp draw for whatever you're selected to. Uh, let's see, heaters, airfoil, and NGNG ice is uh, not required, just the, uh, just the window heat. Uh, air conditioning supply switches are back to auto, those are both on right there. Uh, door cue light is checked off, so you want to make sure there's no door light over here. And the uh, hydraulic system checked and set means the engines are on high and the uh, trans and aux pumps are on. And that is good for after start. We'll go up here to before taxi. APU air switch we did turn off. We also turned the APU off, but uh, you could leave the APU on. Air is not allowed for flight in the APU, but you can use the APU as a source of electrical generation, but not air. Uh, TRP and ART is set as required, so the TRP is flex and the ART is off as a result. The V-Bugs are all set over here. The flight instruments are checked. Everything's uh, looking good over here. We do need to do our control check. This is very important from a SIM standpoint to make sure your, uh, your controls are actually working and talking. You don't want to go barreling down the runway and then find out you have no control. That's bad. So left, right, and that's all set and good. Perfect. Uh, flight controls are checked. Flap slat lever is uh, showing 11 and 11 right there, and the green light in the takeoff position. The let's see, the auto brake and auto spoiler as required. So the auto spoiler is armed. Auto brake is takeoff and armed. The uh, aileron rudder and stab trim are showing zero zero, and green bug. We're lined up with green bug. The takeoff briefing we did perform, cabin report we'll assume we've maintained, or uh, obtained rather, and then we're just waiting for the before takeoff checklist. Okay, so we're going to clear the master caution here because it's just talking about parking brakes and the art in-op. The art in-op is okay because we need the art to be off since we're flexing, so you're going to get that. I like to put the wing landing lights to the, the uh, extended position, but they're not on, so you have retracted, extended, and extended on, and then we'll bring the nose lights to dim for the taxi. You could also do bright for the taxi, um, since it's daytime, that's acceptable too, whatever you want to do. Brakes go off, and we're going to taxi out.
If you uh, if you have uh, a device for nose wheel steering, uh, like I do, you can use that to steer the nose back and forth, which is controlled by that tiller right there. Um, if you do not, then you're going to use your rudders to steer. Charlie here and then we're gonna duck down to Bravo right there as per our our taxi briefing very easy to steer this as you're sitting right on top of the nose wheel for the most part so it's not like a Concorde or an MD 11 where the nose wheels like three city blocks behind you so a taxi is very similar to a 737 you're just long but your nose wheels kind of where you are. So. And you can generally align the taxiway with the uh, the master caution light there. That's usually a pretty good uh, visual indication of where your center point is. And it'll keep you on roughly on center line. Alright, as we come down to the, uh, the end here, this is where this video is going to end. We're going to pick it up over uh, for the takeoff at the end of the runway. So um, again, hit that uh, like button and subscribe button if you've been finding this helpful. I really hope uh, this is giving you a good overview of how to operate this aircraft. Um, come along for the, uh, the takeoff and climb cruise segment here in the next video. You can also check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mustafa. Any questions, comments, things I missed, which is possible, I'm human, uh, you can uh, put in the comments. Please be nice, <laughs> I would ask. Uh, but if you really have questions and want to uh, get some more in-depth uh, information, uh, the Discord is where it's at. So uh, link in the description below, join the Discord, and uh, you feel free to ask questions on there about this aircraft or any other aircraft that I fly, and uh, would ha be happy to help you out there. We'll be doing the before takeoff check at the uh, beginning of the next video. And I think this is about where I'm going to leave you. So we'll see you for the takeoff here. Join me in video number two, or part two of this, uh, this module uh, for that. We'll see you here.